Hi guys, I'm Vicky and it is a great honor for me to be here and share with you guys one of my lifelong companions who is a friend as well as an adoptable teacher for me who is actually a concept called self-consistency. And basically I'll be talking about self-consistency in four aspects. The first one is when did I first learn about it? Secondly, what is self-consistency anyway? Thirdly, um, it's like, why should I care about self-consistency? And at last, how to achieve it? And let's get started with our story. I met self-consistency, um, if you kind of like know me so well, or say, have ever noticed my dark circles. Yes, I got insomnia when I was in grade nine. And I think now it is kind of like Kikami, one of my best team, who taught me a life lessons, because Insomnia, if you know, it's kind of like a mental problem. At first glance, you would think I got insomnia or say I have a hard time to fall asleep because of the noises. But actually, with a closer look, it's how I care about others' opinions or say I get a sense of identity from others, which is bad because you can never get satisfied with others' opinions and everyone is imperfect. So, during the process of solving this unnecessary problem was the worry. That's the time when I first met about self-consistency. And throughout the process, it kind of helped me to mitigate this problem as well. But after introducing my real story, I didn't talk about what is self-consistency. So what is that anyway? If you look at the dictionary, it will give you two possible definitions. Okay. The first one is um, what we are going to focus about because it's more about personal development and the second one is more academic. So it says self-consistency is a trait or a behavior that one has a high degree of internal harmony or stability. You can ponder over it and think about this concept with a definition. And at the same time, I will also talk about my definition to it as being a practitioner of self-consistency for all three years. I think you probably already see it on posters. Um, Self-consistency is like, no matter how homogenous the outside is, one can always stay calm and have an internal balance in his or her in the world. It's like you are having an internal and stable anchor inside yourself. And if you remember, my topic of today is self-consistency, a way to be brave. But I haven't talked about that. So how self-consistency can make us to be brave? And also, why should I even care about uh, self-consistency, this concept? In order to answer the first question, I would like to brought up a concept proposed by Prasco Lackey, or say a book written by him in 1945, I believe. So in this book, he said, once people form a belief of who they are, they will fight to keep this identity. And normally, when they see external changes, they will fight to keep the positive identity. And I think you can actually conclude it, or say, treat this as the power of faith, which is similar with religion, but this time, you are not believing in your God, but you are believing in yourself. And it is not surprising that um, once you believe in yourself, or say, you are thinking that what you did is right, then you are becoming more confident. And once you are becoming more confident, you are becoming braver, because you also believe that you are doing something right. And during the process, you are getting the courage to be hated, as well as to be dismissed. Okay, and I already answered the first question. The second question is, why should I care about that? Here is a list of, I think, a group of target audiences that I would like you guys to hear. And also, I think, Self-consistency is possibly helpful for you. And I won't read it, so you guys can take a look at it. And let's get started with how to achieve self-consistency, the most important one that I want to talk about. And the first step is kind of easy, as well as difficult. And it's kind of like getting to know yourself. I know it's kind of cliche, because everybody talks about this several times. But it is really important, because it is a lifelong lesson, and you are living in your life. So I will treat this process kind of like you're acting like a doctor who diagnoses a patient's illness through description. And this description usually will have 
explicit as well as implicit causes. Take insomnia as an example. The explicit one will be I care about noises, but the in, like, implicit one will be I am an overthinker. And that's how we can get to know ourselves kind of from analyzing the problem. And the first step to do that is you have to find a patient. Or say, for us, you have to reflect on every distressing experiences that you have experienced through. Because what you've been through makes us who you are. And also, it is a great, precious opportunity for you to get to know yourself after reflecting on that. And um, the next step I also want to talk about is after like, reflecting on experiences is, is like someone would say, no, I don't have insomnia, or say I don't, never got those mm, distressing experiences before. But there are also a lot of stuff that worth analyzing. The first, we we'll say, the most important rule that you have to follow is to listen to your body. Why I say that? Because unlike your mind, that sometimes you may self-deceive yourself, your body acts spontaneously as well as intuitively. So if every time you pay attention to the circumstances that you feel awkward with, or say feel uncomfortable with, like during the process you may get sweating, spawning, trembling, etc. Maybe uh, you feel nervous when you are standing on the stage, like what I'm doing now. Mm, you can reflect on the reason why you get sweating. Maybe because you think your presentation isn't that good, or maybe because you think your oral speaking isn't that well. But no matter what, you are analyzing the problem and finding the problem. And also, the third step of getting to know yourself is to reject some unnecessary values. And believe in me, we all were instilled by others on um, some values that we now may think is incorrect. For me, I once thought the um, woman who lose their virginity is dirty, which I would say is completely nonsense and a crap. And I even don't know when did I first learn about it. So I think everybody worth and should have a time to ponder over yourself that you may not believe in what others told you. And when you kind of extract those disturbing factors that make you to kind of can have or say make a better decision a lot easier as well as faster. And basically that is how to get to know yourself. And the second step is about begin to love yourself. And that's very um, also kind of easy because fortunately already you do this first step because you start to stop you start to love yourself once you believe that you say realize that oh I'm imperfect and that's what you did in the first step. Like you already identified identify all the problems that you have. So it was kind of like a natural process for you to then gradually you wanted to solve these problems. And you can solve these problems either by maybe addressing yourself or also seek help from others. It's like from your parents, teachers, classmates, friends, etc. Or say, I actually learned the exerter of insomnia from a Douban Shunmin Yes. Uh, because around um, me, there weren't a lot of people who experienced insomnia before. So I learned the exerter of insomnia from this group. That is to let it go. And to let it go is kind of uh, also a cliche uh, concept, but it is completely different from giving up, I should say. Because letting go is more like a sense of relief and after accepting yourself. And this is a lot of same thing for a lot of stuff. Because once you got the consequences, like when you get a bad, bad scores, you cannot help with that. And all you can do is to calm down and console yourself, or say let it go, and then gradually improve that. And the second one is also about yourself. Because, like I said, everyone is imperfect, so you have to let it go for yourself as well. And here's a quote that I want to share with every perfectionist like me, that the enemy of good should not be perfect all the time. I don't want all of you guys to be sieged in this little dilemma for a, over a long time. And loving yourself, accepting this fact, is very really important for you to be more happier um, later on. And that's 
Um, talk about when you achieve self-consciousness. Basically, that is just to get to know yourself and love yourself. There are some other desirable outcomes that will achieve as well. And the first one is you kind of you, you, you can stand in others' shoes. And um, it's another way of saying, uh, getting to understand others. And I think it is also really important because for us, we are living in groups. And also, humans are collective animals, you can only live without others. So, there are a lot of problems that you will face in the future, like you have to be compromised. And one way to make yourself more of a kind of accept this consequence is to try to start to understand others and stand in other shoes. Because different people have different experiences, as well as backgrounds, knowledge, etc. So maybe you can draw some causal relationship between why these people do the things and make yourself to feel more comfortable with. And also, trust me, because I'm the kind of person that I've been through before, I think disliking or say hating someone is really a time-consuming or say energy-consuming process. It's like, mm, this person doesn't deserve your much attention on them. So you have to find a way to console yourself. And one thing you can do that is try to stand in other shoes. And maybe you can try that in the future as well. And secondly, uh, it's about let it go as well, as I mentioned before. But this time, I think let it go should begin when you first realize that the only constant in this world is changes. And that's the absurdity of life. Because there are a lot of things that is not under control. Like, we all have to die someday. And also, for us, it's about impending application. It's like we all have to apply, study hard, and maybe get a better job, or say, do something in the future to follow the path. But we cannot help with that, because it's like a human specifically evolution. But what you can do is to adjust your attitude towards that. And it doesn't mean that you have to follow this path. You can change. But when you change, I kind of want to share with you guys two questions that you should always ask beforehand. The first one is, who am I want to be? It's a pretty good and cliche question still, but I think it is also necessary because um, there are a lot of unnecessary competitions. It's like once you realize that maybe your classmates just beside you are your competitors because you have different life values and you want to be a different person in the future, then you are not competitors, you are companions. And that will make you, and as well as your relationship, much better once you realize that. And also, whenever you want to make a brave choice, the so-called brave choice, or say to be yourself, you always have to ask, am I be able to accept the consequences to do that? And if yes, then go for it, because that's your life, and you are in control. But always remember that to have a second plan, please, because you don't want to be regret, and also by the back as well. And although I don't want to talk about that, but it's really important that I have to say self-consistency isn't self-deceit. And I think it is kind of like a difference between fake confidence and true confidence. And I can't really help you with that because it is an ethical problem. But what I can say is it's never too late to change yourself or say to fix the problem that you have done because life is too long and also from where to fall, from where to go. And at last, I would like to go back to insomnia again because once I learned about self-consciousness and you do all the stuff that I or introduced to you guys today, um, now my insomnia problems are getting much better. Although I didn't completely get rid of insomnia, but I didn't have a hard time to fall asleep let's say, maybe lying on the bed for about three hours at least. Um, and also, I kind of become braver because I dare to say no, as well as have the courage to express my true feelings in some circumstances. So that's how life's consistency helped me. And hope you guys will also benefit or say achieve self-consistency in the future. Thank you.